X27 is a bodyweight workout with three main goals. We're gonna master the bodyweight training basics. We're going to boost mobility and metabolism and improve stamina and endurance. Let's get after this one. Pistol mobility, great for hip, knee, ankle, but also just getting ready for single leg squats. Now I'm gonna show a couple options. The first one is heel elevated off of a box bench or step for self assistance, kind of a dip position here to assist. And we start with this leg down, but in front of the body. And all I'm gonna do is kind of initially just kind of work some inside, outside elevating the heel will allow us to get more range of motion at the hip and the knee. Especially if we have tight ankles, it's tough to get this deep. So it helps get into that position. It also creates an angle where we get more of a forward knee drive and get that ankle still some motion that it wouldn't have otherwise. Now I can work on picking this leg up and then I can work on doing some kind of lift offs, right? Going from the passive position to, and I can self assist, exhale up, inhale down. And I'm trying to use my muscles as much as possible here. I'm gonna have to really unload myself here, but I, as I get stronger at it, I can do more leg and less arm to get in this position, but I'm just really strengthening the knees in this deep extreme joint angle. Now I can take an arm and reach here and kind of really help get me more forward. And I can even do the lift offs that with just one arm to assist. So I can just spend time in this position, even kind of rocking back and forth using this hand to even push forward more, trying to create a situation where I'm getting more bends without pain. Now, I love this with a ball. Now I can use a low medicine ball. Gosh, the belching today is out of control, I apologize. I can use a high medicine ball or I can use a low medicine ball. The high one is my preferred option. Uh, stability, stability ball doesn't work as well because it's so light and unstable unless you fill it with water or sand. But I just wanna show you how I do this. I'll watch TV a lot doing this drill. And what I'll do is get here, hands here, and I will just kind of roll forward and I'm trying to just keep that foot flat as I get more and more range of motion. So I'll inhale forward, exhale back. And the ball is accomplishing this horizontal action that's really hard to train without having the ball to roll in and out of. And while I'm here, I'm not just trying to get here, I'm trying to actually tension the muscles push down hard into the floor and make all the muscles around the knee get as active as possible. So it's an active kind of stretch, which is what mobility really is. And then I just keep getting lower and lower. I keep getting that knee more forward and forward. And kind of before you know it, you're actually creating this pistol shape and creating isometric strength out of it. And uh, just such a great drill to improve hip, knee, ankle mobility, strengthen and balances between sides and prep for single leg squat work, especially the deep pistol squat variations. I love the changing grip push up, different emphasis and great for extended time under tensions. Now, when I go with a closer position, more triceps, more range of motion through the arms. Wider position, you'll notice closer, hands are more forward, fingers more forward. As I widen out, the fingers have to go out a little bit as well, just like your feet would on a wide stand squat. So. Just looking at the spectrum of which the hand positioning changes as you go wide. The wider I go, the less stable it is for the shoulder. So more stability challenge also works your pecs more. But I can mix between doing, you know, not only close to wide, but staggered. I can go fingertip or uneven fist. So what I'll do here is, and this is great for like one or two plus minutes at a time. And the diamond position is tough. I'm gonna show it, but a lot of people just won't be able to do it. It's too stressful on the elbow, but if you can, you can. Otherwise, you'll just start here. But all I'm gonna do is get into a push-up position, inhale down, exhale up, and do a single rep, and then change the grip every rep. Staggered. Uneven. Fingertip, even just fist. I mean, there really aren't limited options, but what you'll do is, again, it's creating a really long plank as you do repeated singles, changing your grip every rep. So really good extended time of your tension on the chest, shoulders, triceps, and also the abs. So this is just an amazing way. Make it easier by elevating the hands, make it harder by elevating the feet, 
And whatever grips you can't do, don't do them. Do the ones you can, but add more grips as you get better. And one such grip that's really challenging, and you can start by going kind of uh, reverse and overhand here is this, right? It requires a lot of wrist mobility or both, which is super challenging. But again, the options are endless as long as you have the wrist mobility required. Enjoy. Single leg squatting is the ultimate test of lower body strength, stability, and balance, all right? And it's also easier on the back than really heavy double leg squatting on barbells. But the beauty of the single leg stuff is I don't, need, I don't need weight to make it challenging, to build strength. Whereas with two-legged movements, you kind of do because your legs are so strong, all right? Now, this is my favorite place to start when it comes to building single leg strength. It's a single leg squat off a box or step and I like to do it heel elevated because the key to good single leg squatting is upright trunk positioning, getting comfortable with the knee more forward, and this will create more range of motion in the hip and knee, work your lower quads more, which is what is gonna make it possible. So you can do this throw without knee pain, all right? This is gonna bulletproof the knees, especially when done this way. A pair of light two and a half to five pound dumbbells for counterbalance is key. You can also hold soup cans, anything that is light that you can hold in your hands to reach for counterbalance so you can do it better better form, more upright, and then squeeze it hard. The harder you squeeze, the more stability you create throughout your whole body. So what we'll do here is we step up, you'll exhale up, make sure the exhale is full, empty the lungs and diaphragm so we can take a deep, smooth inhale down. As I sink down, the arms reach for counterbalance. So fight the plop. You don't wanna plop, you don't wanna plop. Be quiet and keep as much weight here. You don't wanna put much weight on the leg at all when it touches. So exhale back up. All right, once you get to the point where you can do a two minute set, all right, no problem. You can increase the height of the box or step. But this is so great because you don't need as much mobility. When you do a deep pistol squat leg in front of the body all the way down, you, you can't have any mobility issues at all. You gotta be a mutant to get down there safely. But this allows that leg to kind of go off to the side and we can, especially when using like an aerobic step, I can just keep adding a riser over time as I get better and better at this. So awesome drill. You can go foot flat if needed, but again, what'll happen is, especially if you don't have good ankle mobility, you'll find yourself kind of doing more of a hinge, which is not gonna be conducive to getting long-term into our true vertical trunk squatting position. So do the best you can. And what you can also do too is that you need to, considering the fact that when I elevate the heel like this, it does extend the range of motion off the box. Just go to a lower step than normal in the beginning because the goal is no pain, all right? Nice three to five second lowerings on these guys. Let's build those quads and get ready for some real single leg squatting. Hold on to them titties for the ultimate bodyweight chest workout. Body angle push-up drop sets, hardest move first. Feet elevated on a box or step or even your dip bars. When you're doing this option, you gotta be actively pushing the feet down into the ground for stability. Inhale down, exhale up. This is not only the harder option, but it also hits more of your upper pecs. We hit as many reps as we can or we hit this for time. Come out of there, I move right to the floor, which is gonna be more middle pec, but this will feel super tough, harder than normal because of the pre-fatigue of that harder option. Inhale down, exhale up. After that, max reps or a set period of time, I do hands elevated and same thing, gotta be actively pushing down hard into this, but this will be the easiest option, but not once you get here after doing the two previous versions, but it also hits your lower pecs more. So we get the chest hit from all three angles with just body weight. We also systemically go from a feet elevated position with more of your body weight involved to eventually hands elevated with the least amount of your body weight involved to basically take a cable stack and go from heavy to medium to light. Anytime, anywhere, chesticality, enjoy. Heels elevated, eccentric, deep squat. Now I treat this as a mobility drill. I do it really slow. I'm not trying to get a lot of reps. Just set the clock for an extended time and just work on your hip knee, ankle mobility. Now there's two ways you can do this and consider too, the closer your stance, the harder it is. There's more mobility demands, all right? The wider the stance, the easier it is. And I'm gonna go here with the dip option or a pair of really stable chairs. And what I do is I just kind of use my arms to self-assist 
inhale it down and I kind of get into that deep position. And then as I come up, I'm only using as much assistance as I need to come out of the bottom position. As you get better and better at this, you can use less assistance from your arms. So this is just a great option to get into this deep position and just really try to work on equal weight distribution between both legs. Now, here's another option. Using a pair of light weights for counterbalance, these are a pair of fives. That's all you would really need to get the benefits of this. But all I'm gonna do is again, fully empty the lungs at the top on an exhale, slow inhale down, reaching the weights as we lower. Getting down there, kind of balancing and holding. And also don't rush out of it. Try to come out nice and slow. Three to five reps, anytime, anywhere is a great kind of mobility sequence or you plug into a circuit as a, just a lower body mobility drill for time, let's say one to two plus minutes. Just keep it slow, keep it steady, and just really get comfortable getting nice and deep. Whether it's the dips for kind of a self-assistance or reaching light weights for counterbalance. And you can start by also widening these guys out, all right, as needed, but getting close together really gets you comfortable into kind of getting in that deep flex position with your joints stacked like an accordion. Enjoy this one. The hands elevated burpee is the safest, most accessible way to do burpees, especially when you're in a state of fatigue or doing higher reps. Now I can elevate my hands with a stable box bench step. I can also use a pair of push-up handles. I love these because it allows me, if I do the push-up component, to extend the range of motion at the bottom. It also puts my wrists in a neutral position, which is very joint friendly, all right? Joints in neutral position there. So we start with a wide sumo stance, slight toe flare. There's three progressions here. One is just kind of going up and down without a push-up or a jump. So inhale it down, touch the handles, jump out into that push-up position, <sighs> exhale back up. From there, I can add the jump at the top. Then I can add the push up and the jump. You can see here, my shoulders are always higher than my hips with this angle, which means better shoulder and spinal position, less risk of injury, just great for longevity. It's still a full body exercise combining a hinge, a squat, a plank, push up and a jump, but it's a safer way to do it, especially for my older trainees that want to get the most out of their movements with the least amount of risk as possible. Low impact, high return, get it done today. Woo wee, it's the classic from Uncle Baby the Beast. Tell you what, these body weight skills are starting to get a little more challenging and you've earned the right because you've been consistent, you keep showing up, make your post-workout report in the comments section below, you're done in 20 minutes and I'll tell you what, Go! Halfway.
rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway.
rest. Go. Halfway. Halfway.
rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway.
rest. Halfway. 